Walton in the shotgun with Bernard to his right. And he looks to throw, steps up, heaves Come it deep on. down the middle yes. of the field. Touchdown! Yes. Bengals! Mohamed Sanu makes the catch, and the Bengals get their first touchdown of the night. This is After Hours with Amy Lawrence. Dave Lapham with the call there on the Bengals radio network. They started out hot in Oakland in week one, leading 24-0 at the half, and then went on to win 33-13. So what do they do for an encore? Well, they've got the Chargers in Cincinnati for their home opener in week two. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence, CBS Sports Radio, cbssportsradio.com. Had a chance to spend some time this afternoon with Bengals receiver Muhammad Sanu, and I started out by asking him about this win, especially when you have to travel across the country, how good it was to start that way. Well, it was great. Uh, we needed that to you know, start off our season the way we wanted to. Go out there in Oakland and play against a you know, good Oakland team who – we got a lot of guys in the, on the defense, and uh, we had to start off fast and we had to be physical and play smart, and which we did. Well, you mentioned it being physical and chippy, and there was the incident between Pac-Man Jones and Amari Cooper with the helmet coming off and different flags flying, the potential for fines or maybe suspensions. So as a player, what do you do when you see something like this start to happen? Uh, there's, there's no point in getting involved in things like that. You know, it's no good come out of it, really. Uh, only thing that can happen is either you get fined or suspended or get thrown out of the game. So it's not going to help your team in either way. Pretty much you just try to, you know, end it quickly and get your guy out of there. One of the guys that really stood out for you in the victory over Oakland is tight end Tyler Eifert. And he missed most of last season, all but the initial game, with an injury. Now he comes back in and a couple of touchdowns, over 100 yards. How much does it change what you can do offensively when you have a weapon like that? Oh, uh, it definitely changed the offense a lot because you got a guy like Tyler who can stretch the field vertically and make big plays, and uh, he's a big body guy, and he's he can, he can run, so he can do a lot of great things for us. We can move him inside, outside. He can line up anywhere. So that's the kind of you know guy we need, and you know they can't double anybody if you know they double Tyler. Then you got three receivers, and you know the running backs that can do a lot of great things. They double AJ. He got, Two t- two receivers and one tight end, so it's, it's going to be going to help us out matchup wise tremendously. The Bengals had this unique situation where, along with Tyler, there are a lot of different guys who can catch the ball from Andy Dalton, as well as Jeremy Hill and a Giovanni Bernard out of the backfield. How much of an advantage does that give you over a defense when there are so many different ways that the offense can go out of the huddle? It definitely is a great luxury for us and. You know, there's a lot of weapons, and, and, you know, you got a lot of guys that can make plays, not enough plays or balls to go around. But, you know, guys understand that, and guys are excited to just be a part of something special like this. And we just really want to win. And, and when everybody, everybody gets their opportunity, they want to make plays and be productive. Spending a few minutes with Bengals receiver Muhammad Sanu, fresh off that victory against the Oakland Raiders on the West Coast, getting set to host the San Diego Chargers in week two. It's after hours with Amy Lawrence here on CBS Sports Radio. So you have a lot of targets, Muhammad, and you have a quarterback now who's into his fifth season. He's the only one you've ever played with. He's synonymous now with the Bengals and Andy Dalton. How much have you seen him grow, change, mature into this role as Bengals QB? I just see him, you know, getting better and better each year. I've been with him, you know, he's, he's able to, to throw the ball down. So, you know, he's able to throw the far field throws and he just commands our huddle and, you know, takes leadership, the things that he has to deal with as far as, you know, you know, can play changes at the line and, you know, picking up blitzes. And it's just unbelievable to see, you know, what he has to, you know, memorize and go through and, you know, process in one play. Quarterbacks obviously get far too much of the attention when it comes to a football team. Uh, way more of the credit than they deserve, but way more of the blame when things go wrong. So would you want to be in Andy's position? Would you want to be a quarterback who, as you say, has to deal with all this extra stuff, but also has to deal with all the extra attention and pressure? Uh, at times, no, but at the same time, just to get as much money as they get, you know, you know I, I wouldn't mind it because they sure make a lot of money, but, you know, they go through a lot to, to make that money, and, you know, it's well-deserved because the work they put in, the amount of work they put in is, is just 
remarkable. <laughs> well, that's a great answer. I think we'd all like to make the money that quarterbacks make. And yet, because of that, there's a lot of criticism lately. Regular season success, big numbers for Andy. But in the postseason, haven't seen that victory yet. How do you see him handle it? The criticism that gets heaped on him, even getting booed in a preseason game by your fans. Andy just stays even pill. You know, he just stays right in the middle. It never gets too high, never gets too low. He just stays right in the middle and, you know, takes takes the punches as he rolls with it. You know, he knows it's, you know, what he signed up for, and that's part of the deal. Uh, you know, you get criticized, and when you're doing bad and when you're doing good, you you get the praise, all the praise, and that's, that's how things work being a quarterback. Well, I guess that's one of the reasons why they make the extra money. Uh, let's talk about you personally. You are now into your fourth season in the league. Last two years played all 16 games, so staying healthy. There have been a lot of really big injuries to wide receivers around the league. How do you stay healthy and make sure that you're able to be out there week after week? I just try to take care of my body and, uh, you know, my off day throughout the week. And, uh, you know, I I try to eat as best as possible. Sometimes I, you know, eat junk here and there, but I try to eat as best as possible and just just stay with it. Uh, You know, you just got to be able to let your body, you know, heal. And, you know, you can't put any toxins in your body and you got to rest up, get your sleep early. Because, you know, it's, it's tough playing that many games in a season and you got to practice each week and all the, all the reps you take within those practices. You run a lot. Uh, not that many receivers that I practice. So when you're taking 15 plays a period, you take more than half of those. So Some of the injuries, like Kelvin Benjamin, a non-contact injury, Des Bryant, a broken foot on a play that didn't seem all that massive or violent, uh, you ever think about these things, the kind of injuries that can happen, whether you're running through a drill or in the heat of battle and how it can change things and a season can be lost just like that? Definitely. And it always happens, but you just got to, you know, stay focused within your task and uh, focus on your job because, you know, my, my rookie year, I broke my foot too, so I don't understand what, you know, what happens with that. You know, it just, just happens. There's nothing you can really do about it. Uh, you don't really feel it until and it just happens. Like, I didn't feel my foot you know, getting brain broken. And when when I broke it, it just happened. So I just got to, just got to roll with it. Just got to take care of your feet and take care of your legs. And, you know, your body is your, your enterprise really. So you just got to take care of it. Spending some time with Bengals wide receiver Mohamed Sanu, 1-0, and now looking ahead to San Diego, coming up this Sunday in their home opener. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence here on CBS Sports Radio. So speaking of physical, you are in the AFC North where three teams went to the playoffs a year ago, known for hard-hitting, smash-mouth football. So how competitive this division when you have to see these teams twice a year? It's very competitive. Uh, like, you, you never know what you're going to get out of each team, each game you play them. There's times you go, you play a team, and it'll be a grinder, and, you, you know, they'll blow you out or vice versa, you blow them out in the next game. It's a nail-biter, and, you know, it's physical, and, You know, you're not getting very many yards or, you know, they're not getting very many yards. It just, everything could just flip up. You just never know. It's just how it is in AFC North. And, we, you know, we know that, you know, each week we play an AFC North team, it's going to be a grinder. So how bitter do the rivalries get when you're out there on the field and you face these guys year in and year out? Well, you know, there's always, you know, guys that dislike each other. But at the same time, we have a ton of respect for each other because we know, you know, the type of players that we have in our division and, you know, the type of work they put in and, you know, how, how great of players they are. So you definitely respect the guys you play. So one of the storylines that is prevailing when it comes to football and fans is now fantasy. We're seeing more and more commercials about fantasy football, whether it be the one week or the season long. And now there are even players in the league who are doing commercials about their own fantasy teams. So how much do you hear from fans about you're on my fantasy roster or, hey, you didn't perform well for me this week in fantasy? All the time. Um I always get that, you know, get tweets or uh, messages on your Instagram, they comment on your picture. And, you know, my thing is, you know, I can't control I can't control things like that sometimes because there's a few games you get a lot of balls and there's games you don't. And you just got to roll with the punches and you can't control 
what kind of game is going to be. It's going to be a running game. You're going to run a lot today, so you can't control how many passes you get. Or you just throw a lot of game, and you get the ball a ton, so you can't control you know what happens. So you don't know. You just go out there and play, and you just leave it to those guys, and you don't make any comment on it. So you don't? Because I know some players do get annoyed, and we'll see these tweets that pop up, and they're going back and forth with fans. But you don't respond to people who are ripping you for not being their fantasy bell cow? Oh, no, I don't say anything. I just laugh it off and be like, hey, man, nobody told you to start me. Or, hey, man, you should have started. Like, I don't say anything. It's, it's not, you know, I don't have any control over that. It's, that's your choice and your decision, not mine. I love it. So do you play fantasy yourself? I did last year. <laughs> I mean, it is a little odd. It's the strange phenomenon where you root for one team, but then you have players on your fantasy team that generally you would be rooting against. So is it odd for you to have guys on your team that aren't actually Bengals? Oh, uh, yeah, it was pretty because I did it for this, you know, charity event with uh, with the, you know, a couple other players. So it was just it was just for charity. And, you know, whoever won it got to donate money to their to charity of their choice. So. But, you know, a lot of guys, like, you know, me, I picked a lot of my teammates because, you know, that's who I knew. I didn't, you know, I didn't know how fantasy works. So I just picked a lot of my teammates and just started them each week. Well, that's smart. Wish people would keep in mind it's fantasy football, not real football. So speaking of real football, you guys are back home in Cincinnati, weekend number two, hosting the Chargers. What are you expecting against this team with another real big offense? Oh, uh, we're expecting that, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough game. Uh, San Diego got a great team, and the defense is tough. And Philip Rivers, he's an awesome quarterback. He has a lot of talent over there and a lot of weapons that, you know, he knows how to use, and he scores points. So we know we got to score points as well and, you know, keep keep the ball as long as possible. Well, we're looking forward to seeing what the Bengals do in week number two. You can follow Muhammad on Twitter at MO underscore 12 underscore Sanu and see pictures of his new little boy on his Twitter account. Uh, Can't wait to follow this season for you, Muhammad. Uh, Thanks so much for spending a few minutes with us. We appreciate it. Thank you.